Hello and welcome to the Wigtown Book Festival 2020. I'm Marjorie Lockfee-Gill. I'm the chair of the Board of Trustees for the festival company and I'm also the co-founder and director of Open Book, a charity that does shared reading right across Scotland, including here in Dumfries and Galloway. I'm delighted to be chairing this event today, which is um, covering this book, Louise Gasti's a musical offering. We're also joined by Fionn Patch, his translator. I'll introduce them both and then we'll get on to some questions, um, some of which might be translated and some of which might not. We'll just see. Um, Luis was, is a writer, a lecturer and an art critic. He's born in Argentina where he is just now. He teaches history and has been a curator of um, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Bahia Blanca where he is just now. Um, he's written four other novels, the latest of which was Fireflies, also uh, published in translation by Charco Press. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful book. That other one is as well. Um, and we're, we're going to be hearing from this one today. Fionn, who's here, welcome. Fionn is uh, born in Scotland. Hooray! Um, has spent a decade in Mexico City, but he's now in Berlin. He has curated uh, many interdisciplinary events has a PhD in philosophy, so we're saving the tough questions for you, Fionn, and um, was shortlisted for the TA First Translation Prize for Fireflies. So that's Fionn. Welcome to you both. Thanks for joining us and being here with us today. Um, I just want to start out talking a little bit about this book. If you haven't had any connection with it yet, it's fair to say it's a sort of a little snapshots, little pieces, little stories around music that focus mainly on Bach, but there are all sorts of other things that I'm sure we're going to get into. They're very tiny, like little um, snapshots, really, of different things, all sorts of different things, but really focusing on music and the silence between notes. The first question I really wanted to ask is, how did you begin to write this book, Luis? How did it come to mind? Where did it come from? Well, um, thank you for uh, first. Thank you for the invitation for the festival. It's our pleasure. Uh, I don't know exactly. <laughs> I had written down a series of stories about some experience and musical concerts, mm -hmm. some reflections, curiosities. In a way, like my previous book, Fireflies, it was building itself up. Hmm. Like my last book, which consists only in footnotes, there is not main text. As if I was make a, um, a puzzle without uh, having a, a blueprint. There comes a time when you decide, well, I have a book. Uh, and I love Bach, of course. There's uh, my, my first novel. It's uh, about a, a lost Bach score, uh, but uh, really, I, I I never know when I I have a book in my mind. I I, I have a you know, stories, curiosity, reflection, and well, oh, this is the, the the way. My way. I want to ask, before we get into how you even begin to put them together, just a baseline question. Are all the stories in the book true? I was asking a composer friend about this, and he was wondering too. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, most of them are true. Okay. Uh, most, I think the story of the concentration camp baritone and the Wanda Landowska and her harpsichord in the snow, no. No, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's not true. Uh, I think there are a couple of brief stories that musicians, uh, friends, have told me, but uh, they are not very verified. Okay. So and uh, the story of Fiddlerheim organ that's the one. is not true. Okay. No, no. I, I read a, a review a few days ago that said it's like a, a solo, solo, no? Like a guitar solo in the text. Yeah. In my text, uh, there is always play for uh, GB page. No. <laughs> in, in, in through the origin is that feeling, that dream of uh, Pete Townsend, the music that comes from the sky. No? Yeah. Uh, and suddenly I got the idea of the snow covering an organ. Yeah. Uh, the story has something uh, black humor, there's something. Uh, the Roadrunner or Lonely Tune Merry Melodies, uh, 
No, it's, it's yeah. funny. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's funny, but uh, the, the the original ideas, uh, original ideas. Well, the, the music came from the sky. Mm. Yeah, but it's not true. It's not true. Uh, but the other story, uh, I think, uh, that are true. That's uh, also them. Well, the main story in the text, which is about Bach's Goldberg variations, and and how they're written for the harpsichordist Goldberg, I think. Some musicians aren't sure of the age of the harpsichordist. I had some questions around this, so I think I wondered how much of it was f fable or how much of it is just the stories that we hear in the way that we hear music and take them on. You know, whether you had just taken them on and written them down as they were rather than expecting us to know which ones were true, you know. I don't know. Fion, uh, please, could you... Sorry, can you say it? Can you say it again? <laughs> I was just saying. I was asking about the main story in the text, the story about Goldberg, the Goldberg variations. Whether he's sure that if it's it's a telling of a kind of fable around that story, um, mm. because someone someone asked me that question, a, a musician okay. who should know about mm. that story. The, whether he knew he knows for sure it was true that they were written for Goldberg himself. Es decir, si la historia del origen de las variaciones eh, es certero o, o es más una, una fábula. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. The, I know a story, um, I don't remember in, in, in which book, about Bach, I think in Forkel's biography. Uh, but... Uh, I think it's true, uh, but it's uh, it's strange because you can uh, <laughs> you can sleep with this music, say. Uh, but uh, I really I don't know. I uh, of course all the the, the 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 story that I write about this is it's, uh, it's not true. No, the the. Yeah. Um, the, the Como se dice Fion, el ayudante de cámara y el... The valet. Because Luis adds, um, expands on the story yeah. to talk about uh, Kaiserling's valet. Yes. Um, and implies that the valet had something to do with uh, his insomnia. No? Yes. No. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. And this is, of course, the story, I'll just say for those of you who don't know it, that the Goldberg variations were written in order to send someone to sleep. So, you know, it's a variation on a theme, and then the, and they're, they're circular, so that they're written in a way um, that you, you might get to the end and not notice that you've begun again. So that's the story behind them. And the reason that they're called Goldberg variations is for the harpsichordist playing them, who was Goldberg. Um, I want to ask a little bit of what you talked about earlier, this idea of taking stories and putting them together. How do you curate this? How do you put, how do you actually take this, what must be a pile of short little pieces and decide where to put them? How do you order them? Is it like making music in a way? How do you take your stories and put them together? Uh, yes. Um, uh, um. It's like uh, uh, in Castellano, I don't know. It's um, it's Fion, help me. Uh, <laughs> it's como porque la pregunta fue cómo fue construido, ¿no? ¿Cómo eres el curador de estos muchos fragmentos que tienes un montón de fragmentos? Uh, yeah. No. Um, Usualmente, usually, I I have uh, the story, the reflections, and I uh, print in paper and uh, put all the paper here. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Like that. Yeah. And I take um, a, a, ¿cómo se dice? Fion fibra. Uh, uh, no, like uh, uh, this, yeah, and I uh, 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 mark, uh, yeah, mark, 
uh, with different colors, different ideas, and it's like a uh, movie director. Uh, it's like an uh, editor of a, a, no, of a, a movie. Or sometimes I feel me like uh, if I, I, I think in music, I, I think sometimes if, like uh, if I, I make a, a record. Yes. Uh, what uh, What is the first song? What is the second yeah. song? Yes. Yes. It's, it's like um, I feel me like. Uh, how do you say Productor musical? Like a music producer. Music producer, yeah. Music yes. Album. No, not like uh, George Martin, but uh, <laughs> yes. But I, and I put all the papers here in my in this uh, here and here, and I mark. Yeah. It's, uh, it's my way of, of, of writing. Uh, no, it's it's my way to. Uh, para armar el libro. Yeah, to assemble the book. Mm-hmm. But the, assemb- the assembly feels like it's as much of the story as the story. Some of them are one line, some of them are longer, yeah. but the order you read them, and they come back, you know, through the book. One story yes. will come back over and over. So it feels in some way like Bach, you know, there's a bit of a melody that comes back again later, and you have to pay attention but the ordering feels as important as the stories somehow themselves, which I don't yes, know. Uh, because the, um, one of the, the principles is the, the principle, uh, uh, mm-hmm. is, uh, the, the rhythm and the music in the text. Yeah, this is for me is my my, my first um, uh, interest. <clears throat> yes. Uh, how the book sounds, and uh, which is the, the rhythm and the music, but in this, in, in, for example, <coughs> it's not, <coughs> it's not, uh, it's easy to take music in text. For example, uh, you write something like a uh, sentences, la ta 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 Okay, this is music. But if you repeat, sounds like a mantra. It's uh, horrible. All the book. Then no, uh, I I like to put uh, syncopas. Se dice el fion. Syncopas quiebres, like a free jazz. Like yeah. sometimes like a free jazz. Yes, but uh, this is the el, el principio ordenador es el ritmo para mí. The, the guiding principle is is the rhythm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and I, you can hear the syncopation in the in the text when you read it, even when you're oh. reading it to yourself, which is very nice. So, this is maybe a good moment to ask Fion about translating, because earlier we were talking about translation and um, this book, because it there are very short pieces, and as a poet, they, I'm a poet as well. It, it sounds like poetry at times, or it, it reads like poetry. What was it like to translate? What were your primary concerns, or how did it feel different from other texts? Yeah, well, I was just uh, re- reflecting on it uh, <laughs> earlier today, actually, and re- remembering um, the, the process. And I, w- I was thinking that unlike with some texts, um, I felt uh, an obligation to actually steer quite close to the, to the l- sentences and even like the, the structure of the words within the sentence, you know? Okay, yeah. It, because you know, sometimes in translation you can work quite freely and once you've got the idea, you can find the best way of expressing that idea in English and you can sort of rewrite a line or um, re- rewrite um, a piece of dialogue, for example, uh, in a way that would ju- just sounds a lot more natural in English. Um, but with, with Luis's work, um, I translated uh, Fireflies previously to this one, and um, it's it's sort of broadly similar in, in the way it's um, in the way it's structured. And although the, the sentences are, as you say, they're, they're quite short and quite self-contained, and at first glance they, they look quite simple. They look almost just like little 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 statements. Um, 
almost like extracts from an encyclopedia. Um, but when you get inside them, when you get up close to them, you realize a lot of work has gone into constructing that rhythm and that melody that Luis is speaking about. And to, to capture that in all its simplicity and for it to sound natural in English is, um, is quite, it's quite challenging. Yeah. But, but a lot of fun. How much of a dialogue goes between you in that, in that translation? Luis, are you reading it in English as well for the rhythm of the language? Or how does that work between you? How much connection was there between you in that process? Uh, well, uh, it's me in English, no. <laughs> no, no, it, 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 uh, Pion, please. Uh, Is he, um, bueno, I'll, I'll answer my, my side first. Okay. Está preguntando cómo es nuestra comunicación, no? Um, with, with Fireflies, I, the previous one, I had to ask Luis quite a lot of things because I found, I, at first I found it quite disconcerting. I wasn't sure how to approach it. Mm. Um, but not, now I feel like I've got more attuned. And so the, there were only a sort of a handful of questions, really, about okay. factual things and just to be sure that I had the interpretation right. Because he often leaves... Uh, me corriges, Luis, si no es cierto, pero he, he often leaves things hanging in a quite ambiguous manner. ¿no? A veces dejas las cosas bastante ambiguas. Yes, yes, yes. yes. This is the intention. <laughs> this is why it sounds like poetry to me, because for me, poetry does that a lot. It leaves you as a reader to decide. And I think Luis is doing that in lots of places, as well as the rhythm. So together, it feels like in some ways, like poetry. But Luis, are you, uh, yeah. re are you reading it in, in different languages or are you just answering questions and letting your baby go? Am I reading in different languages? Yeah. Si, si tú uh, lees uh, las versiones traducidas, no, uh, 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 no, uh, because my English, I, I, I can really uh, not... Uh, Literature English. Uh, I, I, I don't realize uh, if, uh, if it's something wrong. Uh, I don't know. I can read about music, about uh, history or anthropology. Yes, but technical books, not okay. not literature, literature books, because uh, my, my English is not not so so good. But uh, Fionn's uh, makes me. Uh, Make me questions, uh, very uh, de details, uh, like a uh, cirujano, surgery, surgery, like a surgeon. Yes. Uh, yes uh, uh, why you put this? Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> no, no, but you, <laughs> it's a crazy man. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it's incredible. All the people in charcoal press, it's incredible. Yes, uh, I, I love that. Yes. But uh, it's a very professional. Okay. Uh, it's just, um, but I, I can read, for example, my the translator in, in, in French or in, in Portuguese, maybe it's close uh, to my, in my language, you know? but uh, no, no I, I read in Portuguese and I, I don't realize this, <clears throat> if it's good or not. Okay. I, I, I trust in the translators. Okay. Especially in Fionis. Fionis is my other me in English. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You heard it here. It's my smart me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's a beautiful thing to read in English, so, so um, I have to agree. Mm. Um, yes, I, 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 I think, yes. I have not the book. Uh, it's because of no uh, pandemia and uh, mm. it's difficult. Uh, can I ask you a little bit? Can we dig into the book a little bit? I want to ask you a couple of questions, and then hope I'm hoping you'll read. Yes, you'll I, read for us. Yes, um, please. I want to ask you about this theme that comes back in the book over and over. This idea of a beginning and an end, a da capo, you know, this turn. Was that something you were aiming for? So many of the stories, Mahler, the Goldberg, are all about coming back to something, going back in a circle. Did you have this in mind, or? Did it just happen as you were putting the pieces together? Uh, 
I don't know really. It happens. Uh, I don't know if I like uh, the. I don't know what to say because uh, I choose the the story because for me there are beautiful stories, there are amazing stories, uh, and uh, in Spanish, yeah. Uh, la, por ahí lo, hay algo en la literatura argentina sobre lo circular que es muy fuerte. Argentina, uh, from Argentina has a strong connection with this, this idea of circularity. Okay. Por ejemplo, Borges. Borges, of course. Is and a... his friend Bioy Casares. Bioy Casares mm -hmm. has. Uh, extraordinary stories about this, uh, the circular time, and uh, my, the, the, the story and the history of my country is a circular history, really. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's, it's true. Uh, maybe Argentine writers have uh, the, the, the circle in our mind, no? but uh, yes. But I, I, I choose the, the story uh, because for me, I repeat, there are, uh, they, they have a, something poetic. Yeah. Yes, something very, very poetic, in, in my opinion, of course. So. Yeah, no, they definitely do. But it, yeah, so many of them have this embedded in them, this, this idea of circular. Are you, and even the book itself comes back to Goldberg at the end. Uh, yes. He comes back to Gold at the end, who is playing himself yes, this circular thing of going back to his old recordings at the end. But there's a little trick. <laughs> Tell I, I us. Don't, <laughs> uh, I, I don't say anymore, but uh, there's a don't, little Don't trick. give it away, Luis. Okay, <laughs> you have to finish it. You, you can read with very attention the last page. Yeah, okay. We're not telling you. We're not telling all of you out there. It's circular. Yeah, okay. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it's, it's something that, it, it was a good thing that I did ask Luis about this, <laughs> because I thought it was a mistake. So, so. Say no more. For all of you readers or listeners out there, you'll have to tell us, see if we can tell what it is. We can send it in. So is this a good moment to have you read a little bit for us so we can hear it um, in the original and the English is the hope? And then we can pick up. Would that be okay? Uh, Maybe read them. Can we read them both? You know, just so that we'll have two different things to chat about. They link. Luis is going to read a, two short passages for us, and Fionn's yes, going to translate. Yes, I read uh, 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 two, two little sections. No? Uh, this is the first. I need lights. I need light. Yeah. ¿Cuándo se canta la última canción de cuna? Languidece de a poco, como de a poco se entra el sueño, hasta que un día sin saberlo cantamos a nuestro hijo la última canción. Es él quien la ha pedido. ¿Acaso hacía unas noches que ya no la escuchaba? Nosotros no sabemos que será la última. Nuestro hijo sí. Demora el sueño en llegar. I'll, I'll read this one first, ¿no? <coughs> When is the last lullaby sung? It gradually fades away, just as we gradually shift into sleep, until one day, unknowingly, we sing our child their final lullaby. They've asked for it. Perhaps it's been a few nights already. We don't know that it's the last time, but our child does. It takes a while for sleep to come. And the other, it's um, Bach no indica para qué instrumento compuso el arte de la fuga. Lo escribe en cuatro pentagramas diferentes. Tampoco aclara en qué orden se deben tocar sus 18 contrapuntos. 
De alguna manera puede decirse que es música sin timbre, o lo que es igual, sin sonido, como si no hiciera falta ejecutarla. Música visual, de algún modo, libre de las impurezas del aire. Algo así ocurre con cierto arte conceptual. Su ejecución pareciera desmerecer la idea. Pero la idea sola no basta. Cuando un bebé nace, tiene la potestad de hablar perfectamente todos los idiomas del mundo. Para él, la voz de la madre es pura música de leves alturas dulcísimas. Pero ese sosiego casi monocorde, día a día va durmiendo las lenguas que nunca ya podrá hablar perfecto. La voz de la madre deja de ser música entonces. Ya se pueden separar las palabras, ya hay sentido. El silencio se retira de a poco para dar luz a los primeros pensamientos. Y así, los idiomas muertos se transforman en música, casi monocorde, y se, se los escucha, y se los escucha como si se rastreara por la tela una línea de Jackson Pollock. <coughs> Bach never specified which, which instrument the art of fugue was written for. He arranged it on four different staves, not clarifying either the order in which its 18 counterpoints should be played. In a sense, it might be called music without timbre or without sound, which amounts to the same thing, as if it didn't even need to be played. A visual music, in a manner of speaking, free from the impurities of the air. Something similar happens with certain kinds of conceptual art. The execution appears to take away from the idea. But the idea alone is not enough. When a baby is born, it has the power to speak every language in the world. Its mother's voice is pure music of the sweetest, mildest pitch. Yet, day by day, this almost monotonous lulling sound puts to sleep all the languages it will now never be able to speak perfectly. That's when the vo mother's voice stops being music, when words can be distinguished, meaning arrives and the silence retreats little by little to let in the first thoughts. And so the dead languages become a kind of toneless music, heard as if tracing a line across a canvas by Jackson Pollock. Beautiful both, thank you. Can we, can we discuss this idea of lullabies to start with? It's the idea of the first music. How did you come to include it? Um, because it makes sense as a reader to think of lullabies as the first song, but you wouldn't expect yeah. it in a book about Bach. Uh, uh, well, you make a very difficult question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you must know that. You must know that. <laughs> Uh, uh, why? Um, I remember my mother uh, sang one uh, lullaby, yes, and uh, my mother sang a very, it's a very beautiful singer. Lo dije bien, Fian? Perfect. Sang, uh, yes, and, and in, she played piano. And uh, I always uh, remember the, her voice when I uh, go into sleep. Yeah. Uh, it's very sweet, so, so sweet, the, the voice of my mother. Maybe, well, maybe uh, this. Uh, this experience me uh, motivó a escribir algo de eso por ahí. That was the motivation for writing this. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, it's not the, no hablo de una cuestión edípica, no, no, no tengo esas cosas con mi padre, pero... Anything edipal. No. Sure. <laughs> No, 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 really, no. But the, the, uh, his voice is, uh, is an extraordinary voice. It's a very sweet. And uh, I, 
Yo, yo le cantaba a mis hijos también. And they would my children. Yeah, of course. Yeah. With my boys. Um, yeah, and my little children said, oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sing, please. <laughs> We want to sleep. No, but um, I don't know. But for me, it's something, um, it's something magic in uh, Lullaby. Because uh, it's important to to came into the dream with a, a, a mind, a happy mind, a peace in your mind. Yes, because my problem is the insomnia. I have <laughs> insomnia. <laughs> not a loud, wow, what a big insomnia, but uh, yeah, this is important. And, um, but, but, you know, and I, because, uh, I found that the Goldberg story and the Sherezade story yeah. it's, a, it's like a yin and yang. Yeah, it's a, and I found, a, no, found a, and I um, buscaba otras historias así, pero no encontré. I went looking for similar kinds of stories, but didn't find I, I didn't find Uh -huh. And do you think in the lullaby or in the Bach, I don't know if you think you could sleep to the Goldberg variations, but are they, are you, are they encouraging the act of listening? Or are they encouraging you to switch off? Because for a lullaby, I'm, I'm a mother of young children. It's meant to make them not listen in some ways. You know, it's meant to make them sleep. I'm not, for me, the Bach wouldn't do that. Um, and even the, the Scherherzad wouldn't do that either. So it's a funny thing. The stories that you've collected about trying to sleep or in an evening are different from the lullaby for me, which are, is to, to ask someone not to listen in a way. I don't know if you think that. Lo traduzco? Que, que sí, eh, que hay un contraste entre las Goldberg, porque sí. realmente no te ayudan a dormir, no te, te, te invitan no. a dormir más. No, 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 no. Es porque creo que esta es una historia falsa, about the Goldberg and the Count, no, Kaiserling. Yeah. It's not true, it's not true. I think it's not true. <coughs> But, uh, I can I can uh, sleep with music. Mm. I, I need silence. Say, I need silence in my mind. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, yes, uh, nobody wants. Nobody except babies. Uh, you can sleep with music. Oh, no, no, because I because the music is uh, para dormir. La música tiene que ser circular. Porque si es, en, si es un discurso en línea recta, uno se concentra en la sucesión. Mm -hmm. Lo que sucede no es hace dormir, el círculo es hace dormir. So, for, for music to help you sleep, it has to go around in circles. And if it's going in a linear direction, then you're always waiting for the next thing. This is the thing with people listening to podcasts to go to sleep. I don't know how people do it because the same, it's a linear idea. You're waiting for the next installment, I think. I don't know. For yeah. me, anyway. Um, yes, yes, that's it. Yes, for me, too. Yeah. So, can I ask about the art in the book? Because of the music in the book and there's stories in the book, but then there's a whole section about modern art. Rothko, particularly, I was following the purchase of, of work and the fact that it's been in, in cellars somewhere or, or in a vault somewhere. How did you connect it? How did you find stories about art? Where is the connection there? Is it about the audience or the watcher, or is it about the perform? You know, the the creation of it. How do they they the stories beautifully fit together? But it's not how you would expect. It's not what you would expect to find in this book, or it's not what I expected uh, to find. <clears throat> Sometimes I I think that abstract art. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like music with uh, colors. Uh, it's, 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 yes, it's music with color. Uh, music in the 
in the same uh, no the music um, se prolonga en el tiempo it's a, music extends over time uh, over time but this is music in uh, in one space in one uh, in the present all uh, it's like a partitura uh, like a score like yeah, a score okay. yes for me and uh, performing arts uh, like uh, uh, well, ballet or como se dice instalaciones no um, I have not the, the, the word in Spanish. Uh, but the certain conceptual art is uh, like performance. Uh, it's like something like music for me. Yes. Uh, I tengo una suerte de sinestesia. Yeah. Well, that's a kind yeah. of synesthesia. Yes, I have synesthesia. Uh, it's not exactly science that you know, but uh, yes, uh, no, me, de, me dificulta mucho separar a mí las, lo que siento con las artes. I, I find it difficult to separate my own response to different forms of art. Okay. Sí, y el proceso, creo que el proceso, the creative process in uh, visual art and music it's the same. Mm -hmm. or, or, or when you write, it, it's the same. Uh, I don't know exactly what, uh, what is this process. It's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to put in words for me. But uh, you need the... Fion sería una mente de principiante. Un estado de apertura. ¿Sí? En donde las cosas no se saben si llegan o salen. So, so you, you need uh, a, a beginner's mind, as it were, a kind of a, a state of um, openness to the world huh. for, for things to okay. come up. That's beautiful. It's like, see, it's like uh, uh, Heidegger's concept under the, the open. Uh, Yes, uh, un, est uh, un estado de abierto, ¿sí? un estado de apertura hacia uh, que nos permite captar la singularidad de las cosas. A, a state of openness to the world that allows us to capture the sing singular nature of things. Okay. That makes, yes. that makes sense. And you tell us the story of Messiaen in this story, who, who had synesthesia or you tell us he did. And the, is it the windows of Saint-Chapelle in Paris that give him the image of one of the pieces he writes, that he's translating color into music? Is that correct? Él menciona a Messiaen. Sí. Tenía sinestesia y su experiencia con las vitrales de Saint-Chapelle. Yes, uh, uh, it's like a uh, northern lights, and uh, but I, I believe in the, in the messianic, no. But uh, when people say, "Oh, I have a synesthesia," uh, every music has a synesthesia. Henry, you have a... no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, how? How <laughs> you? How could you know that? No. Uh, no, if I, yes, I have synesthesia. I hear the red color. And <laughs> I have a friend, I have a prove. friend, I have a friend who has it. I have a friend who has it. And I ask, I ask all the time, what, I, what I, note I, is this? <laughs> <laughs> but, I try to trick her. <laughs> we, no, 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 I think, uh, I, I, we have synesthesia, or I have synesthesia, with names. <laughs> You're really, uh, for me, uh, named like uh, Julia uh -huh. is blue. <laughs> Hugh, okay. Hugo in Spanish, is violet. Really? Fern Fernando is brown. I don't know why, but for me it's just... Uh, That's funny. Marcella, Marcelo, 
Yeah, Barcelona is a blue again. What color is Fion? <laughs> Fion, oh, well, 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 well. I don't know because it's in English. Uh, oh, okay. We'll come back. I don't know. Maybe brown. <laughs> no, I don't know exactly. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly. My colors, my own colors. Uh, maybe yellow, but I don't know. Okay. Not, not with myself works. Yeah, okay. but I uh, I think every uh, everybody experiment this uh, sensation. Okay. Yeah. But with music and color, uh, Kandinsky Kandinsky said, uh, "Oh yes, I when I look my my, my painting, I hear music." Okay, uh, but I don't know why I believe in Messiaen. I believe him. Yes, 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 yes. yes. For me, it's, uh, yeah, I believe. And he says I don't know he says he's trying to get us to see the colors he sees when through the music. That's his aim. Yes, you tell us that in the book. That that's his goal is to try and get him to see the colors. Here's a question, though. This is one of the things I noticed all the way through the book, and Messiaen is the same. So much of it isn't about the audience. So many of the stories are about the composer or the performer, and there's so little about the audience. Um, I wonder if you're, again, whether that was meant to be, but so the lullaby stories are almost the only one around uh, the audience as the child, but all the others are stories about performances that went wrong or went well or... But they're, again, performances for the, about the performer or the composer. Yes, yes, I put my, my attention uh, in, in, in the composers, and, uh, the, the musicians, but not in the audience. Um, Do we need an audience? This is I, my question. I, 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 but, uh, or, um, I don't know why I did uh, I prefer to, but uh, maybe you could tell us maybe. the Joshua Bell story. There's a very small story about Joshua Bell ah, that, yes. that, that explains it beautifully. Maybe you can tell us what what it is because it, it explains it perfectly. I think. Yes, uh, Joshua Bell. No, Joshua yeah. Bell. Uh, well, uh, Joshua Bell. Play uh, a concert in uh, Washington Station, Metro Station, yeah? Yeah. free for the people. And in uh, nadie le daba la menor atención. And no one paid any attention to him. Mm. He, he was just playing like a, street, like a street performer. Because uh, people just walked. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for me, uh, music is not only sounds and or silence, it's a context of listen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you have not a context, there's no music. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, if I um, put uh, my, my, my students, no? Uh, the art of fugue uh, Wednesday morning at eight in the classroom called uh, Listen Bach. <laughs> no, it's impossible. <laughs> you need a context to hear music. And uh, of course, and, uh, a, prof a profession, a professional de la musica. Uh, a musical professional, mm -hmm. a musical professional, uh, realized that oh, this is Joshua Bell, or this is extraordinary. But me, or the most of the people, or the amateurs, oh, well, that's a, a man who played violin. I don't know. I have no time because the the context uh, no uh, help us. Yes, there's a context to you see a uh, to watch a movie or, or a reading. Uh, it's very important, yeah, the, the, the context, but not only the, the space context, mm. uh, the, the, the age. It's not the same music uh, when you hear 
Uh, for example, in my case, or in Argentine case, the tango. Yeah. Yes? Mm. Uh, the, the lyric of tango is a lyric for all people. All, all people, um, not, not young people, not uh, teenagers. Yes, because the the lyrics is about uh, are about um, lost l l tragedy lovers. Yes, uh, the fracasos en la vida, the li life's failures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and when you are uh, when you are a teen or sixteen, uh, well, we're talking about that. I'm, I'm, I'm teen. <laughs> But now I I I, I listen to tango. I not I, I don't love tango, but I, because uh, dicen algo que me llega en mi contexto de edad. That now now at my age it it speaks to me. Uh, it's a uh, here in Argentina. There's an extraordinary music musician, uh, El Indio Solari. Uh, the rock and roll star, the biggest rock and roll star here. Uh, excuse me, it's amazing. But uh, his lyrics are very deep because he's an old man, that's, uh, 70 years. Uh, and uh, of course, I, I, I love this lyric because my age uh, allowed me to, to uh, enjoy. Uh, the, the, the poetry. Uh, but, but yes, this is uh, music is context, age context, place context, space context, uh, time context. Oh, and one of the recordings that you talk about in the book a lot, and you come back to, is Glenn Gold's recordings of the Bach Goldberg variations. Famously, when he was young, much faster, mm. and when he recorded yes. it at the end of his life. Similarly, I think as you're saying, he's coming to the music with something else. I was going to ask you which recordings you prefer. Yeah, the, the, I prefer the, the, the last one uh, because it's, a, the, the, it's not a, it's a wisdom interpretation as a slowly as a, but the, 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 the the first version is uh, like a young and um, like a horse. <sighs> yes, uh, this is extraordinary. But uh, but sometimes sometimes I prefer in my context in in a way uh, I prefer the first. But uh, usually no. If I by night with a couple of wine, oh, I prefer the the slower one. Uh, the yeah the lights the the, the last uh, version. I think I had more admiration for the the first one when I was younger because it's so technically impossible to do what he did. Ah, yeah. And now I as you I prefer the, the later one. But the problem I think <laughs> is uh, in Spanish. Cuando escuchas la primera versión de algo, te quedó como referencia. The, the, the first one you listen to, the first one that you hear, becomes your reference point. Yeah. It's important the, the first time. The first time is it's important uh, always, in, in every way. Okay. But, uh, for example, for me, the um, adagio of the fifth uh, concert, the fifth uh, symphony of mother. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, my first time was with uh, Subin Meta. Yeah? Subin Meta interpretation. So for me, it's the, it's the model, the, the, the archetype. Yes. I think it funcionamos así, no? Las primeras veces marcan. That's just the way we work. The, the, the first one we hear, it becomes imprinted on us on, in some way. And then we hear the variations better. I think if you know a piece by one, a recording by one pianist, then if you hear another pianist play it, you can hear the changes. You, I hear the pianist, the second pianist better. 
in some ways because I, I, know the, I know the first one better. We have a question from someone who's listening today. Um, he or she wants to know if you're, able, if you're able to listen to music while you write. Please. No. No, I can't hear music. No, because I prefer music than my own writings. Yes. <laughs> no, yes, really, really, I can. No, no except uh, no for 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 um, take an inspiration. Mm. Yes, I, maybe I put uh, some music very uh, loud, very, very loud. <laughs> But for five minutes. But, but, but I, I need a clima. Uh, like a, an atmosphere? Or? An atmosphere, yes. I, I need an atmosphere. When I need an atmosphere, well, I put, uh, I don't know, Pink Floyd uh, or The Who. I love The Who. Yeah. <laughs> okay. or, or classical music or jazz. But uh, it's, it's weird. No? It's not. No es frecuente, it's not frequent, with not frequency. Yes. Yeah. I need silence, absolute silence. Uh, in, in this place, this is my, my desk, uh, it's in the middle of the, of the block, mm -hmm. yeah. in a very, very beautiful neighborhood, and uh, it's no muy, con no mucha circulación de auto. It's a quiet area, there's not a lot of traffic. Okay. No, yes, uh, I, 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 I need silence. I, I, I don't understand in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, uh, the, the writers came to the, the bar, pub, and uh, yeah. why? It's impossible. Yeah. It's silent. Oh, I maybe sometimes I write an idea uh, in, in a bar. Oh, this is a good idea, or in the beach. Yes, I, I always uh, siempre voy con un cuaderno. I, I always take a notebook with me to the beach. Uh, yes, yes, always. And I take a note, but I, I, I can uh, write no, because I need silence. Sign. But so or many, si so many writers sit in cafes, as you say, especially in New York and in Britain. <laughs> no, they they no, can only no, write in a cafe. So it's impossible. <laughs> no, no, no. I need the, the, the absolute silence. How about you, Fionn? Are you writing or translating in with music or with sound, or again, are you a silence person? Um, it's, no, I do listen to music a lot. Okay. When I, <laughs> I quite love. Oh, uh oh, we won't ask you which music you were listening to when you translate. We won't ask you. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's been channeled in in some way. But, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Of course, I had to. I did listen to all the pieces that are mentioned, yeah. uh, but but since you were mentioning Gould. It was, uh, he, he des Luis describes uh, Gould's gestures in such intricate yeah. detail that the most important thing for me was to watch those videos yeah. of, of him playing um, to get a sense of, because he has all these sort of these, this kind of hunched over posture and all, all the, the movements of his hands. Um, and to, to be able to, to understand what, what the, the description, I really had to watch that in. In some detail, and they and they are out there. If you go looking, you can see you on YouTube. There are videos of both, you know, and him talking about the differences between the two. He's, he's very open and generous, uh, I think, with us to explain why he re-recorded them in particular, and being very honest about how he didn't like that first recording very much, which I think is interesting. So, um, yeah, that was really interesting. We've only got a few minutes, and I have so I have so many questions I've sent through. So apologies, we haven't got to them. But I want to ask because there's a whole chapter on war and music, and music that's composed in war, um, played during war, the concerts during war. How is that different from the rest of the material? Why, why? Again, I felt it wasn't about the audience there; it was about the performer and the composer and the conditions it was created. How did it end up in the book? That those particular stories. That you chose. Por qué este cambio en, en la sección de la guerra? Estos diferentes fragmentos sobre la relación de la música y la guerra. ¿Por qué los incluiste en el libro? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. 
uh, wow, uh, because um, there's a there's a story uh, the, in my country, La Guerra de las Malvinas, the Falkland, Falkland War. Yes, yeah. uh, it's true. The um, soldiers uh, cry with the music. Mm. Yes, it's, it's, it's really true. Uh, I was a soldier, not in the war, uh, the, because I uh, I have a lucky man. Yes, and uh, I belonged. It's important. Yes, in Spanish. En un momento pidieron un soldado que sepa que sea bachiller, que, ¿sí? ¿Qué se llama? Que sea bachiller, que haya terminado el, la escuela secundaria. Ah, sí, sí. Uh -huh. y, y fuimos corriendo tres y dijeron el rubio. Uh -huh. Me llevaron, el resto fue a pelear a Malvinas. Yeah. So the, the anecdote is that um... Uh, Luis has uh, blonde hair, uh, light light hair, um, and they were they'd been conscripted and they were in a training camp, um, no, in the run up to the war, um, and they uh, one of the officers one of the officers called for um, who who uh, who had finished their high school, and three of them went up. Um, and they picked the guy with the guy with blonde hair, so that was him. And everybody yes. else in the camp went to fight. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, the blonde, the, the, the blonde one, come. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, y me quedé en, en, en el ejército en, por obligación acá en, en la Patagonia, pero no fui he, a he, he, he stayed in the army, but on the mainland. Okay. As a conscript, but not um, not fighting. Of course, I didn't like the war. Eh? And I, I hate my governments. I hate everything. Eh? But uh, but one of my friends uh, uh, cried in the Falkland, cried in the island mm -hmm. with music, and uh, he uh, he told me the story. It's his true. And uh, in other hand. Uh, in war, in war, music is motivation, is torture. Yeah. I suppose because it's the, the most evocative of arts. Okay? Uh, the one that comes most directly of our emotions. Uh, and it's a very powerful weapon. Yeah. And if you want to have the slaves, don't forget music. Yeah, of course. As yeah. an American, that's it's very about. important in war. Yes, and uh, I, I and I have a a lot of story about war and music, but this is to put in the book. <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, a, I it's prefer. Nice. It's a beautiful curated piece about pieces about the creation, about the playing, about the lack of playing and silence. Um, and how that's a kind of music as well. So it, it it covers so much in such a small bit, but it's interesting to hear your own connection to it because, as you say, there are so many stories. I was curious how you put this, put this last piece together. Um, I think we should end on a happier note because we only have a minute or so to go, and I wanted to end on something that you all won't have heard but we were chatting about before we started, which is music for certain days of the week. Now, Luis was telling us, are you willing to tell us what you must listen to? You can only listen to on Sunday um, or whether there are other days, other kinds of music from the book that are for, for certain days of the week. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you have the last part, please. Lo que estábamos platicando antes de... Ah, sí, sí, sí. Se escucha qué música. Just to leave us, leave us with a happy order. Qué día de la semana se escucha qué música. Oh, well, <laughs> Sunday is back. Apparently. Of course. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday night? 
Saturday, Saturday night rock and roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Or, no, no, and uh, Friday night the jazz. Oh, that's a nice yeah, one. Three, uh, like uh, Oscar Peterson, Bill Evans, uh, Brad Nadeau, uh, jazz with a whiskey or a drink. And, uh, okay. On all the days, I, I, I don't know, uh, maybe it's, it's is it raining or not? <laughs> uh, is it cloudy day? Well, we, we can have our audience Twitter. Yeah. Send us Twitter messages. Let us know what's for the rain. We were discussing <laughs> what are sunny songs and what are rainy songs. So, But it's good to know. Friday yeah. night's jazz, Saturday night rock and roll, Sunday night, Sunday Bach, Sunday morning Bach. Yes, it's It's escrito. I, th I think we probably have to leave it there. We're over time, but um, but I want to say... Sunday is for Bach. Bach. We heard it, you heard it here. You heard it here. Tomorrow morning, we expect all of you to be listening to Bach, as well as tuning in to the rest of the Wigtown Book Festival. We've got another day to go. Um, but uh, if you'd like to order the book, you can order, order it. It is a remarkable book um, through the Wigtown Book Festival website. I can't recommend it highly enough, um, but I just left for me to say thank you to you both for a, a terrific conversation, for letting us in on your history, but also um, your recommendations on which bits of music to hear on what days. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks to everyone for joining us, and we look forward to having you back, having your the audience back later in the day and speaking with you both again soon. Thank you both very much. Okay, no, thank, thank you a lot, R really. Thank you very much. It's been a thank pleasure. You, Fiona. Thank you, thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Luis. <laughs>